Hey everyone and happy Sunday. My name is Bree and welcome back to another Sunday here at Family of Grace. We are so happy that you could join us. If this is your first Sunday and you are a visitor, please make sure you stop by the core and get your welcome gift. There are so many ways you can get connected and stay connected with us online. We have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, and a YouTube page. We also have a website. You can find us at www.family-grace.com. Also, don't forget, we have an app. Find us in the App Store at Family of Grace Connect. We want to hear your prayer request. Every Sunday, we pass out prayer request cards that come around whenever we're having announcements. Make sure that you are filling them out and turn them in into the drop boxes in the front. Also, if you want, you can find them online and send it in there as well. It's springtime, so that means it's time to send our youth to camp. So when you're out in the lobby, make sure you check out the envelope wall and maybe pick a couple envelopes. Match it with a dollar amount and we'll get those kids to camp. With summer being right around the corner, don't forget that you need to let me know if you're going to send your child to camp. Elevate Children's Ministry is going to Children's Mission Camp right here at Tall Timbers in the summer. Camp dates are July 19th through the 23rd. Let me know if you want to send your kid to camp. Spots are filling up very quickly. All right, those are all the announcements I have for you. So go ahead and stand on up because worship is about to start right now. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Are you glad it's August? Are you ready for the heat to be out of here? Good morning. We welcome you to church. We welcome you online to church if you're not here this morning. We are thankful that you're here and we are ready to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Let's do it. Okay, you can put your hands together this morning. Let's worship him. He's coming. 
coming on the clouds. The kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chain. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. So open up the gates, make way before the king of kings. Mm, yeah. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow for the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sing it again. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? One more time. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. As you know, August 1st, or I hope you know anyway, I tried to put us back last month, last service. Sorry, we're not going to go backwards a month. We're going to trudge ahead. So it's August the 1st. It's the first Sunday of the month, which means it's our Dollar Holler Sunday. All right, this ministry started a couple of years ago. Um, and we wanted to be able to uh, just whatever we had in our pockets that day, um, we wanted to be able to bless this family. And so it's grown in so much, in so many ways. And we've been doing it for almost two years now. And we've been able to bless a lot of people um, with this ministry. So today, uh, what I want to do is introduce you to our recipient. Her name is Miss Cecilia Gray, and that's her son next to her, uh, Devin. Devin is a sophomore at Pineville High School, and Miss Cecilia is an LPN nurse at the VA hospital. So uh, she was nominated because on Father's Day, they had an unexpected loss. Her father, her husband, sorry, her husband and Devin's father um, passed away um, from a heart attack. And so um, she works hourly, uh, she had to miss a couple of work days. She had just started her job. She didn't have any time saved up. Um, and, you know, they just, they were just trying to get through the week. So um, she was nominated, uh, or she was sent, her information was sent to us, and so we were able to help bless her. What we did was we bought Devin his school uniforms for the year. 
And so she said that honestly was the biggest blessing she could have ever asked for because she had completely forgot about it. So um, through your faith and through your giving and just through your service, we were able to bless this family. And now um, their lives are changed forever. But we get to walk beside them through this. And so uh, I'll be looking for Miss Cecilia to darken these doors one day. She had to work today, but she's hoping to get off some Sundays to come visit us. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to pray and then we're going to stand up and we're going to give our dollars and we're going to ask the Lord to bless the next recipient with this money. So, Father God, we love you. And Lord, today you do so much, God, and you bring people into our lives and you allow paths to cross that would never have crossed. So, God, today we thank you for Miss Cecilia and her family. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to bless her and to minister to her family. God, I pray right now that on those dark days, on those times where she just feels like she can't go on, Lord, that you remind her that there's a family praying for her, there's a church family praying for her and for her son. And Lord, today we just want you to surround them with love and encouragement. And God, right now we pray for the next recipient that you're going to bring to us through these funds. And God, I pray that you, um, God, just give us the right person. Lord, bless this money. God bless this giving of the people. God bless your people for responding in obedience. We love you. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Just stand on your feet. Amen. Stand with us and come forward if you would like to give this morning. Isn't God good? He supplies every one of our needs. We're thankful for that this morning. This is we worship. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Do you believe that this morning? Sing that with us. We've all searched for the light of the day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old line. We've all run to things to know that just ain't right. When there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain. Come on now. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. I'm going to need your help with this part because if you believe it, I want you to sing it. Can you do that this morning? Let's sing this part if you believe it. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. Yeah. If you believe it, if you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. Sing it again. If you believe it. If you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got pain. He's a chain breaker. Oh, if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You 
got chains. He's a chain breaker. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Do you believe that he's a chain breaker? I'm thankful for his promise that he never leaves us, he never forsakes us. Let me tell you this morning, I'm so thankful that we have some new faces on the stage. We've got some new players. And guess what? You can be one of these as well. That way you don't have to hear me play guitar. Amen? So if you just feel inclined, if you have a little musical talent, maybe you don't have any musical talent, but you like to turn the knobs in the back, if you'd like to maybe put the words on the screen, maybe run a video camera, and you want to be a part of this worship ministry, you can be. So I want, here's what I want you to do. I want you to fill out your card and turn it in today and just say, I want to be a part of the worship ministry. And we're going to get in touch with you and we're going to plug you in. How about that? Yes. Can you do that this morning? So if that's you, if you feel that tug at your heart, you know, the Bible says that we are one body but many parts. And all of this, lights, camera, action, worship, all of this doesn't just happen. Did you know that? It doesn't just happen. So we need you to help us this morning. We would love for you to be a part of this. I would love to, to work with you this morning. But as we continue to worship him, he's going to continue to break chains in your life. Some of you might have walked in here this morning with a chain that needed to be broken. He can do that. Let him do it this morning. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen.
every chain broken in this house tonight, this morning. God, there's so many things that are happening in our lives. Whether it's the COVID, whether it's job loss, maybe it's death. God, there's so many things that we bring to your feet today. God, I pray as we continue to worship as as Pastor Ralph brings us the word today, that you bring him a fresh anointing. God, I pray that, that you move in this place like you've never moved before. That you transform lives, that you heal people, that you bring families together, that you break every chain. God, we th we're thankful for that this morning, that you have the power, that we worship a God that has the power. So we're thankful for your grace and your mercy this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you can. Thank you, Jeremy and worship team, for leading us in worship. And uh, a couple of us was discussing when uh, when Jeremy was asking about getting some people on stage. There's some you don't want. Amen. Uh, when he when he comes to singing, so uh, you, and you know who you are. I know who I am at least. So uh, man, we're glad you're here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us online. And I don't know if you noticed the theme today. Uh, about uh, in the music, but it had to do with breaking change, and and I think that's very appropriate because uh, today we're going to continue our theme of being unleashed. And uh, Pastor Brad uh, started us on this last week when he talked about it. And so, what does unleashed means? Un unleashed means to be uh, released from restraint. Uh, to, to be to be released uh, from whatever it is that's that's holding you back, and uh, uh, there's a couple of guys that I know that uh, works for the water department, uh, water district, and and uh, this past week they had to go uh, they had to go to this home which they've been to several times before. Which they've been to several times before, and and they had a they have a dog they have a dog in the yard that that's always chained up, and and so they uh, they they went into this yard where they knew the dog was, and and the dog when when they came in, man, the the dog came uh, charging like like he normally did, but the difference is when he got to the place normally where his chain would stop him, guess what? He wasn't on a chain. <laughs> and so he kept going, and he actually bit one of the guys. And so they they understand what it means to be uh, released from restraint. Uh, and, and so uh, I hope today that we can understand uh, what God has for us as, as he wants to release us from being restrained. Because that's what Pastor Brad was talking about last week, that, that we have been unleashed uh, to connect, to connect with, with the Spirit, to connect uh, with where God is moving, to connect with people uh, for whom God is moving in and in their life. And, and, and we saw that. And I'm telling you that, that he reminded us that there's nothing more binding uh, than social or religious customs. I'm telling you that can be a chain for us. That, that can be something that, that, that restrains us, that, that holds us back from being all that God created us to be. And, and all that he wants us to be. And, and so many times I believe God is calling us out of the norm, out of what we would call our comfort zone, out of something that we're familiar with. He's calling us to be released from the, 
those things that restrain us. And, and when God told Peter, he said, Peter, I want you, he was showing him something. He was teaching him something. And he said, Peter, I want you to arise, to kill, and to eat. And I'm telling you, in Peter's life, this was a lot more than God saying, Peter, it's okay to have a pork chop for supper. I mean, God was doing something unique, something uh, unfamiliar uh, in Peter's life. He was, he was releasing him from some things that was holding him back. He was releasing him from some things that were restraining him. And what did Peter say? No, Lord. Do you know what that is? When God says go and you say no, you know what that's called? That's called an oxymoron. You know what an oxymoron is? An oxymoron is a combination of contradictory words. I mean, they, they may sound familiar to us, and we may accept them as they're said, but they're, but they're can, can you think of one? Can, can anybody think of, a, of an oxymoron? Anybody? No? <laughs> what, what, about, what about a small crowd? Would that be considered? Yeah, a small crowd or uh, uh, an open secret. Well, which is it? I mean, uh, or, or the deafening silence. Deafening uh, And when people, people talk about me, they say, pretty ugly. So, so which is it? I mean, pretty uh, Hey, and another one is, boy, that fried chicken, it's awfully good. So those are things that we're used to hearing. Uh, but, but it really doesn't make sense when you think about it. And, and that was the case in Peter's life when God said, Peter, get up and go. I'm releasing you from the things that has been restraining you. And he said, no, Lord, that, that's an oxymoron. So Peter was bound by his social and his religious custom that prevented him from fulfilling all that God had for him to do. And I'm afraid that so often in our lives, if we aren't careful, we will fall fall into that same trap uh, that Peter was in. We will, ex and so today we're going to explore this in our text, and, and we're going to be looking in the book of 2 Peter uh, and, and thinking about today that we have been unleashed. We have been, the restraints have been removed, the restraints from holding us back. And so in 2 Peter chapter 3, we're going to read a, a couple of verses now, and then we're going to look at some more later. And so beginning in verse 17, it says this, Therefore, dear friends, since you know this in advance, be on your guard so that you are not led away by the error of lawless people and, and fall from your own stability. Watch this, verse 18. But grow, but grow, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and now and forever. I want you to know this morning that God has unleashed you. He's unleashed me. He's unleashed us to be able to grow in grace. And, and growing in grace is, is, is more than, than growing in your understanding. It's more than, than growing in your understanding that you've been accepted by God. And it, it is understanding that your acceptance by God is not based on your performance as a Christian, but based on Christ alone. And that's the deal because most of us, most of us have been educated in what I would call the school of performance. That, that's what we're used to. That's what we're accustomed to. Uh, that, that's been ingrained in our life. I mean, from the very early ages of our life, we're, we're taught this. So, you, you know, uh, you, you put something in, you get something out, right? I mean, so, so uh, uh, clean your room and, and you'll get an allowance. Be good and, and you'll get a cookie, you know. And so there's a, re, there's a direct, you know, uh, work hard. Hard, practice hard and you'll make the team you know there's a there's a this direct relation between how much we put in and, and how much we get out and I'm telling you that if we aren't careful uh, you know there's nothing wrong with those things. I believe you ought to work hard I believe you ought to have a goal I believe you ought to work to re, uh, reach that goal I believe you ought to put in the effort you ought to put in the time you ought to put in the study you, you ought to you ought to do those things but I'm telling you it's a tragedy when we bring this philosophy over and over into our Christian life and into our Christian walking. And so many of us think that God is some kind of heavenly vending machine that if we'll just put something in that he likes, then he'll give us what we want. And that's not the case. That, that's, not, that's not the way that it works. The grace of God that saves us 
as Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 talks about. It, it, it tosses, uh, it, it loses its meaning when, when we are uh, succumb to the pressure to perform. And so many of us think that living the Christian life is a performance. We're, we're trying to perform for God. We're trying to make God uh, plea. You know, we're trying to make him proud of us. We, we put something in expecting to get something out. And, and, and it's a tragedy when we, when we, man, when we look at God in that way. That's not grace. That's not growing in grace. You see, we, we, we dress things up, even in, in religious verbiage, we dress things up. And, and, and so how many of you have heard, ever heard the phrase, well, God helps those who help themselves? Well, that sounds good. It's just not biblical. I mean, it, you don't find that in Scripture. You don't say that. And there's only one place. Listen to me. There's only one place where you and I, where we can stop this performance, where we can stop performing, and that is in the unconditional love and acceptance of Jesus Christ, who is full of grace and truth, uh, the Apostle John tells. The same grace... Listen, the same grace that saves us is the grace that sustains us in life. We live the Christian life the same way we enter the, the family of God. See, we enter the family of God by, by God offering His grace to us. And, and by our faith, we're reaching up and receiving what He's offering. And that's the way we live out this thing that's called the Christian life. It's by grace, through faith. It's not our works. It, it's, not, it's not through anything that we're doing. Listen, it teaches us how... Grace teaches us how to live without being performance-based, without being, without having to feel like uh, that we have to perform. Listen, God loves you not because of what you do, but because of what Jesus has already done. That's the way. That's why God loves you. And, and some people would think, man, if that's the case, then. You know, that'll lead, to, that'll lead to us sinning. No, no, no. Listen, if you get a handle on what grace really is, if you receive grace as God intends for you to receive grace, I'm telling you, it won't cause you to sin. It'll cause you not to. It'll cause you not, a want, it'll cause you not to want to because of His grace. God loves you. And so growing in grace means learning to live in God's grace. Just like we receive it at salvation, we live in it, we grow in it, and that's what motivates us. That's what sustains us. It's what keeps us going. And you can only grow in grace through a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ who, who teaches you, he teaches you from his word uh, that, that you can take out, you can take and live out in real life. It's about, it's not about rules. It's not about regulations. It's not about performance. It's about relationship. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ and walking with him. And so I'm, I'm here to tell you, growing in grace it's not learning some, you know, 10 steps to spirituality. Growing in grace is not a ladder where you do, you know, t 12 easy steps to spiritual maturity. That's not what it's about. I mean, it, it's growing in grace is not simply mastering certain principles in your life. It, that, that, that's all performance-based. That's not what growing in grace talks about. And too often we have approached the Christian life. Listen, please get a hold of this. We approach the Christian life as if it's a subject to be learned and not a life to be lived. Now get a hold of that. The Christian life is not a subject to be learned, but it's a life to be lived. And you can't grow in grace in a classroom. You can't grow in grace in a seminar. Uh, I mean, you can learn some things. Uh, you know, you, you can only grow in grace and knowledge through a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and letting him live his life through 
you. It's not based on our performance. It's based on allowing Christ through the power of His Holy Spirit that lives inside of us to live out His life. And I'm afraid that, I don't know about you, but that takes the pressure off for me. I don't have to perform. I don't have to, to, to meet certain rules and, and regulations. I don't have, all I have to do is have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yield myself to him. Let him have his way. Let him live his life in me and through me. And so we have been unleashed to be able to grow in grace. And then he says we've been unleashed to grow in knowledge. And so in 2 Peter chapter 1, I want to read several verses here. That he talks about this. In 2 Peter chapter 1, we're going to begin reading in verse 2. It says this, May grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything. Let me, let me pause right here. So when we're talking about letting Christ have his way in us, when we're talking about living out this Christian life that, that we're talking about, the, Peter says, God has given you everything. Can you say, every, say everything with me? Everything. See, he's given us everything we need, everything we need to live out this life that he has for us to live. He said, his power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Verse 4, by these, by these he hath given us very great, and precious promises. How many of you know God's a promise-making and a promise-keeping God? He's given us those precious promises so that through them ye may share in the divine nature. You see, you and I, we're not born with a divine nature. We're born with a sin nature. And so when, when we receive Christ as our Savior and He comes in, He begins working out His nature, His divine nature inside of us, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, Knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, same thing as growing, and are increasing, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be useless or unfruitful. These will keep you. These will keep you from being useless and unfruitful. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, the person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election because if you do these things, You'll never stumble. How many of you stumble in your Christian walk? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not unusual for a baby, to, for, for a toddler, for, for a, 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 a young and that's just learning how to walk. It's not unusual for them to stumble and fall. In fact, it's unusual for them not to. And so as they're beginning to learn how to walk and they're all wobbling, and this, you know, they fall and then they grin and they get up and they take off again and they fall. And get, I mean, that doesn't bother. But you know what? Somebody my age falls. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> it hurts big. It takes me longer to get up. It takes me longer to get over it. And so as we grow and as we mature, as we grow in grace and as we grow in knowledge, we don't fall as much. When we do, it hurts. It hurts bad. It takes longer to get over. And so he's saying, as you grow in grace, as, as, Christ be, as you begin to let Christ live out his life in you, 
You're not going to stumble as much. You, you, you're, gonna, you, you're not going to fall as much. You're not going to. You're not going to sin as much. And, and so we grow in our knowledge by by learning of Christ, by reading His Word, by by putting it in inside of us, by by walking with Him daily, by by spending time with Him in prayer. You know, just walking and talking with Him, by, by submitting to His Lordship and and His authority in our life. But I'm telling you, this curriculum. I'm growing in knowledge. This curriculum really can't be planned by us, can't be anticipated, but through the sovereignty of, of, of a loving God, through His sovereignty, the, the pathway that we walk will be as individual, will be as unique as we are as individuals. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation <laughs> in this world it's it's gonna happen it, it's gonna it's gonna happen and i'm telling you how and, and so how many of you know that if you're if you're walking with christ if christ is living in you and you are walking in his way how many of you know you're gonna face some opposition but but how many of you also know how do you strengthen a muscle when you strengthen the muscle, you, you put resistance against it. And, and when you put resistance against it and you keep working it, it gets stronger. That's what he's talking about here. You're going to have resistance as you're walking with Christ. But as you're walking with him and as that resistance comes, you're going to get stronger and you're going to get stronger and you're going to get stronger in your walk with him. That's the way that it works. And, and, and we can't predict that. We don't always know, know what it's going to be. And the truth is, if growing in grace, if it required uh, perfect conditions, it would never happen because I'm here to tell you that we grow in real life. We grow in our everyday life. We grow in, in, in the things that, that are happening in our life with us. How many, of you, how many of you know about the school of hard knocks, right? I mean, we've all been there, and our colors are black and blue. We, we understand that. But we also know that those are the things that strengthen us as we are growing and as we are walking with him, and if any of us is to grow in grace, it'll be under the conditions uh, that we live out our everyday lives. That's the way that it works. <coughs> Whatever the situation in your life might be, that's where you're going to grow in grace and in knowledge. Because as you're going against the flow, and as you're, you're experiencing that resistance, you're going to learn some things about yourself. You're going to learn some things about God. You're going to grow in grace. You're going to grow in knowledge as you're living out that everyday life. And so the problem is we, so many of us think we've got, you know, we've got our spiritual life or Christian life over here, and we got our work life over here, and, you know, we got our hobby life over here we got this over there no no it's all <laughs> it's all encompassing and as we're going about any or all of those things that make up our life there will be opposition there will be resistance and that's why god says i want to unleash you I, I don't want you to be restrained. I, I want you to move past those things. I want you to move past the, the strength that you have now. I want you to move past the, the, the growth phase that you're in now. You, you know, it, the, a, a, a little baby is cute, but a tragedy would be if that little baby stayed a baby all of its life. And God says, that's not what I, I want you to grow. I want you to continue to grow. Sometimes that's going to mean resistance. Sometimes that's going to mean things that, that, that are hard. And God says, I want, to, I want to take the leash off. Because you know what? You can go further than you've ever gone. 
You can be more than, than you ever thought you can be. Even in those difficult times, because in those difficult times is where you get the strength to move beyond that. And so we, he wants us to grow in grace and knowledge. And you know what else he wants us to do? He wants us to grow in his image. Grow in his image. To be unleashed it is to grow in the image of Christ. And, and we're not talking just about biblical knowledge. We're talking about biblical character. I, I'm telling you today that, that Christ is more interested in developing your character than he is making you comfortable. And that's not easy for us to accept sometimes. Because we like, listen, we like taking the path of least resistance. But sometimes taking the path of least resistance is not the way that we grow because it doesn't develop us. It doesn't strengthen us. It doesn't cause us uh, to grow. True spiritual growth and maturity will always look like Jesus. And so that's his desire. We've talked a lot these past few months about the will of God and what it is for you and what it is for for me and how God just outlines five things specifically that you don't have to wonder about, you don't have to worry about, is this God's will or not God's will? And I'm telling you that as those, as you submit to God's will in those five areas, you know what will happen in your life? You'll begin to look more and more like Jesus because you know what? His desire is to conform us into his image and that he is able to live his life in us and through us. We just read that in in, in First Peter uh, about what it what it looks like. It describes what this image looks like, and and he talks about the divine nature and and, and uh, uh, having brotherly affection and, and that leads to godliness and 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 all of those things. And I'm telling you, God is far more interested in developing your character. Than he is. See, most of us, when we're thinking about the will of God, most of us are thinking about what job should I have? Where should I go to school? Who should I marry? What car should I buy this car? Not this car? You know, we're, we're worried about all of those things. But I'm telling you, we submit to those five things that we are sure of. God will begin to reveal the things that we're not sure of because his character will begin to develop in us, and we'll begin to look more and more like him. And so God develops that through the spirit, his spirit living in us, empowering us to be able to live out our a- everyday life. And I'm here to tell you, I, listen, living the Christian life is not hard. It's not hard. It's impossible. And that's why. There, you know what? There's only one person that has ever been capable of living what you and I know is the Christian life. And that's Christ himself. And that's why he wants to live his life in us and through us. Is because we can't do it. We, but, but he can do it in us and through us. Only Christ can live it. And so, I mean, if we know that, if we know that intellectually, then wouldn't you think the smart thing to do would just let him do it? I mean, just let him uh, just have control of our life. However, we, we, we like to take it back. We like to take it back. That's why in Romans 12, 1 and 2, you know, Paul talks about, you know, that we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. You you know the problem with a living sacrifice is it can get up and get off the altar and that's why every day we have to make the decision god i'm getting on the altar for you i'm giving myself to you today and sometimes we have to do it multiple times a day we have to say god live your life in me and through me because i can't do it I, I, don't, I don't have the strength to do it. I'm not able to do it. And, and so we like to take back control. We say, yeah, I'll, I'll get on the altar, God, but oh, wait, I got to get off and go do this. No, no, that's not the way that it works. And, and the good news is that the Lord knows all about us. Right? You know he knows all about us. And he loves us anyway. <laughs> he loves us anyway. And he accepts us unconditionally. 
And it's not a shock. It's not a shock for him when we fall. He knows. He doesn't throw us away. He doesn't kick us out of the family. Aren't you glad? I'm so glad that, that when I fall, I, man, can you imagine? Can you imagine if you got a, if you got a kid, a toddler, and, and, they, and they just they fell down and skint their knee or even like me but broke some bones and had to go to the hospital or, or, or whatever? You don't throw them away. You don't kick them out of the family. God doesn't do that. No. He pulls us close. And he holds us. And he says, let me put a Band-Aid on that. Let me fix that for you. And oh, by the way, don't do that again. <laughs> don't do that again. And that's the way we grow. That's the way we grow in grace. That's the way we grow in knowledge. That's the way we grow in His image. Those things. And that's what the Apostle Paul was talking about in, in Ephesians chapter 4. And he wrote, listen to this. He says, Then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness and the techniques of this... Don't you know, as a kid, they're just all over. I mean, they can be so high one second and so low that, I mean, they're just all over the place. Oh, yeah, I want that. Oh, no, I want that. I want to get it. Paul said, when you grow up, and he says, watch this in verse 15. He says, but speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way unto him who is the head, which is Christ. From him, the whole body. Fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, watch this, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. Jeremy was talking earlier about how this is one body and we are all parts. And you know what? When you're weak, it, it, it helps promote weakness in the body. But as we grow, as we strengthen, then the whole body grows. The whole body strengthens. It promotes that growth. And that's why it's important for us as individuals. And so as we wrap up today, how do we grow in grace? We grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We fix our eyes on him. And we focus on the person of Jesus. we sin he said I don't condemn you I love you I love you so much that I'm willing to pick you up I'm willing to give you another shot another chance see every one of us we have some areas in our life where we, we do pretty good at this. We have some areas in our life where, man, we can trust God. We've grown. We've got that part covered. But there's probably some areas in our life that we haven't yielded to Jesus. Some areas in our life that we haven't allowed Him to take control over. Maybe you're, maybe you're trusting. Maybe you, you, you may be trusting God in some areas of your life. Maybe, maybe like your health or your family or your ministry or, or whatever it might be. While, while at the same time, you're living in your self-sufficiency of your finances. And you're not trusting God there. Maybe you need to grow in that area. And, and, and over our lifetime, growing in grace. It involves opening our eyes to our need to trust God in every area, in new areas of our life, on a new level. And maybe you think, well, I can't, man, that's a, I can't trust. Listen, that's why God wants to unleash you. That's why God wants to remove the restraint that you've placed on yourself because he hasn't placed it on you. 
That, that's why, uh, listen, so many of us have been tethered by the enemy. We've been tethered by the devil, and, and, and we think that we can't go any further. And God says, yes, you can if you'll let me live my life through you. My power, not your power, my power that lives in you can take you further than you ever thought you could go and accomplish more for him than you ever thought that you could. But so many of us, we, we've had, maybe we've fallen before and we've, been, and we've been hurt and we say, I don't want to do that again. But you know what? You learn something that's growing, that's learning and, and, and growing in grace and knowledge. You say, I'm not stepping on that again. <laughs> that's how we get stronger. That's how his image begins to become a reality in our life. And so we place restraints on ourselves and say, I don't I can't go there. I can't I can't do that. And so I, I believe that, that there are some of us in this room today and maybe some watching online today that man we have some self inflicted restraints. That we we've we sang today about God being a chain breaker. And if you believe that, if you truly believe that, you need to learn to trust him. You know, when when people who train elephants <laughs> they start pretty much the day that elephant is born. And what they do is they take a cord or a chain or a rope and they place it around that baby elephant's foot and they, and they tie it to something, a stake or a post or, or something. And that baby elephant, it can't break the cord. It can't break the leash. It can't pull the stake up. It can't break the post. And it's learned it, in its life as growing up that that cord will only let it go so far, <laughs> just like a dog. And when that elephant gets fully grown and fully developed, gets all its strength, that cord couldn't hold it. That post couldn't hold it. It's too strong for it. But the problem is, it doesn't know. It doesn't know that it could easily snap the cord. It doesn't know that it could easily pull the stake up because all of its life, it's been conditioned that if it, that thing was around its foot, it could only go so far. And I believe that's true for a lot of us. I believe that we have allowed the enemy to put a cord on us. We have allowed him to... To, to restrain us and think we can only go so far. That's as far as you can go. And Christ says, no, no. <laughs> I'm the chain breaker. I'm the chain breaker. I can break that. I can break that chain in your life. And so I just want to close this morning by asking you, what area of your life are you restrained and thinking, I, this is as far as I can go? And Christ says, no, no, you can go further than that. And, and so we have to know that if we're to grow in grace and we're to grow in knowledge, we have to understand what God is wanting to do in the midst of our, as we're living our life, in the midst of our life. I wonder today if you would respond to God's grace with your faith. You see, that's where the two comes together. God offering you his grace. You receiving it by faith and saying, God, remove the restraints so that I can be that you have for me. Would you bow your heads with me?
So today, I just want to ask you, first of all, as God has offered you His grace in the matter of the forgiveness of your sin and receiving you as His child. That you confess your sin to Him, ask Him to come into your life, ask Him to save you, he, you don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. God says, by my grace, I'm offering that. And it's through our faith that we receive it. And if you have that settled, if you haven't, please come see me. I can help you take those next steps. But if you have that settled and you know that you know that you know in your heart, would you examine your life this morning and, and, and see where the restraints what is it that's holding you back? What is it that's keeping you from being all that God has for you? What is it that, that's keeping you from letting him live his life through you and in you? And would you let him break that chain today? And would you let him set you free from any restraint that's holding you back? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we, we just thank you so much for challenging us through your word today. And Father, please help us to know how to grow in grace and knowledge. Please help us, Lord, to let you remove any restraint, to unleash us, to break any chain that's in our life that prevents us from being all that you created us to be, all that you desire for us to be, all that you designed us to be, Lord. May we give that over to you. Lord, if there's, if there's some area of our life that you've, you've just pointed out to us and said, I, man, we're just not trusting you there, help us to do that today. Have your way. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet this morning, if you would. And this is your time to respond to the Lord. If he has, and if he's put his thumb in your back, if he said, there's an area of your life that you need to let me have. If there's an area of your life that he's identified for you that said, man, this is... This is the cord. This is the chain. This is the restraint. Would you let him take it off today? I'm here to tell you, you're stronger than you think you are. Not in your own power. Not in your own strength. But in his strength, in the life of Christ that lives in you, wants to live through. Maybe you want to worship the Lord this morning and come in and give Him your tithes or your offerings. You're welcome to do that. Maybe there are some things in your life that you have some questions about. And we'll be hanging out in the lobby. We'll help you take any next steps, whatever that next step for you might be. So whatever it is, just let God have His way.